could you please introduce yourself, your company, and what is it that you guys do? Thank you for having me. My name is Jason Haddad, co-founder and managing partner of Rocket Drop. We're a wholesaler and distributor of consumer electronics. We've been in business for 15 years now. We distribute across the world and domestically here in the USA. Rocket Drop has been moving Apple devices for more than a decade now. So what are the what are the challenges that you guys still face while moving big quantities of uh, Apple phones globally? For us carrying one of the most iconic brands in the world, Apple, we need to make sure that we deliver that from start to finish as it's delivered to us. That's the way Apple wants it, that's the way we want it, and that's the way our customers want it. As long as we do that, the challenges are easy. Our customers ask for what they ask for, and we need to make sure we exceed expectations, not only meet them, especially while carrying Apple. Last year when COVID hit in the initial stages, uh, did you guys have to shut down your warehouse? Um, how did you manage your staff and what new business models did Rocket Drop adapt you know, to grow their business? <clears throat> yeah, COVID was definitely a scary time. Um, thankfully for us, we, we did not have to shut down our doors. Uh, within the first couple of weeks, we took all the necessary precautions, sanitizing, um, you know, talking to our employees. We, we just had to adapt. Uh, we've We've been through a lot in this business, economy changes, currency collapses, but this was the first time it was a worldwide issue. So every country, every company, all our stakeholders were affected. Uh, thankfully, we, we put our head down. We, we took it very seriously, but we were able to come out of it and we've, we still were able to retain 100% of our workforce, which we're very proud of. Sources in the industry confirmed that 2020 was one of the best years in the telecommunication industry. What would uh, you have to add on to that? You know, 2020 was certainly a challenging year, especially if you're talking in the beginning of you know March, April time frame where things looked really gloomy. I wouldn't call it the best year in Rocket Drops history for us personally, but it, it was a it was a decent year in the sense that we were able to overcome these massive challenges and really just sustain the business and continue to employ our workforce. I think from that, we saw a lot of adaption into in-home learning, uh, at-school learning, corporations requiring people to stay at home. So we adapted uh, with those changes and really just continue to show up every day and deliver the products that our customer needed. And then when COVID began, those products started being different products such as laptops, accessories, iPads. So we continue to do our core, but also focus onto those other categories, which we're also very strong at. Now, Rocket Drop sells globally. You guys sell in US and then you guys sell internationally as well. So putting it into proportion, how do you guys, uh, do you guys have a ratio on that? Like is it 50-50 or is it 60-40? Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. Every year is different. Um, you know, we, we sell to where the demand is. We have far reach across the world. We have far reach domestically. There's been some years it's been, you know, 99% international, 1% domestic. There's been some years where that ratio shifts the other way. So really we go where the demand is because of our, um, you know, resources and being in the industry for over a decade, we're tapped in all across the world. And we have product, as I mentioned in the beginning, Apple, that a lot of people uh, want, as well as a along with Apple, we carry all the major manufacturers. So we follow the, the demand and we're able to distribute that the said product to where the most demand is. Now, what changed in those numbers did you experience, let's say, in 2020? What difference was there? In 2020, it shifted significantly. I think we saw all every country that we work with severely affected by covid so it didn't change much in the fact that we still had to get this the product that we're procuring to different places some of it was in the usa some of it was international i don't have the percentage breakout of what it was in 2020 but it was it was it was pretty consistent to what we've seen every year since we started this business there's been some years where Middle East was big for us. There's been some years where Europe was big for us. There's been some years where Hong Kong was big for us. So mm -hmm. for us, again, it, it doesn't matter the year or the situation. Um, it could be USA, it could be those those countries. Uh, we're just putting the product where the most demand is. Is there any country that there's always a demand for 
Apple devices and Rocket Drop has been really good in supplying uh, Apple devices to those countries. Any any such con- countries? I wouldn't say there's one country that stands out. They're all pretty equal. Mm-hmm. Um, cl- mm-hmm. You know, we clearly have strong partnerships. Uh, you know, stronger partnerships in some areas versus others. But really, I mean, there was one year where Europe was the number one country for us export wise. There's been some years it was the Middle East. So Mm -hmm. there isn't a number one every year. But what we Mm -hmm. try to do is have strong partnerships with customers, freight forwarders in these specific areas. So when the economy shifts towards that, that specific area, the demand shifts there, we could plug and play pretty quickly. And I could give you several years in, in, in history of, on Rocket Drop where one country, one year was our top, and then the next year it was, it was the lowest, and a different country comes up. So mm-hmm. really, it's not one or over the other. It's, it's mm-hmm. more about us being tapped into as many areas as possible. So when the demand does shift up, we're able to move quickly. What is the main aspect that, uh, that drives the changes uh, for you know, different countries, different demands, and to the change in demand? every year what do you think uh, is the reason behind that yeah it's a good question i mean it could be as simple as currency exchanges one year mm-hmm. there was brexit so we saw a lot of movement in those areas um it could be warranty issues it could be you know what product do you have do you have a samsung do you have an iphone do you have an ipad and certain certain areas may have more of a demand for certain product categories so it, it's not really anything uh, micro that Rocket Drop can can control. It's usually macro things such as economic, currency, and then of course what what product are you carrying and how does that fit the market demand in that specific market? Apple can basically sell anywhere in the globe, and the warranty still stays, right? Yes. Yep. Because we purchase direct from Apple. Mm-hmm. or any manufacturer anything we carry comes with that one year direct manufacturer warranty mm-hmm. that's in the usa i know in the europe there's two years where everything we're doing is based in the usa so if you purchase an item from us you're going to get that one year warranty direct from the manufacturer whether that's mm-hmm. apple samsung dell hp all our products 99 percent are brand new we're not really tapped into the used and refurbished space purposely. So because we're dealing with brand new products direct with manufacturers that we have relationships with, that warranty carries from start to finish, whether you know we make the call, you make the call, or the end user makes the call, they're gonna be supported with any issues. I know that iPhone 12 series has the warranty across the globe. Was it before as well that uh, Apple used to provide warranties for let's say XRs or 11s as well? Or is it, is it just uh, iPhone 12 because it doesn't have any charger? No, Apple provides a warranty for anything that's brand new and it's mm-hmm. within it's in within activation. So not when you purchase it. So if I have an iPhone 5, but in theory, right, and you still haven't activated it if it came from me which came from apple and then you activate it in 2021 that even though it's an iphone 5 the moment you activate it the year warranty begins at that moment so that's how apple works over here and that's kind of how the warranty carries so for us regardless if it's a 12 slim box big box iphone 11 iphone 10 as long as it's brand new and had and came from a direct source as such as Apple in this example, that warranty will carry the moment it's activated. And it could be activated years years later and still the, the warranty will begin at that moment. Anywhere around the globe? Anywhere around the globe. Of course, sometimes there's some issues regarding some, you know, you know, you go to this country, you go to this, you call this Apple store. But for the most part, if you call 1-800-MY-APPLE, you give them your IMEI, they verify where it came from. It doesn't matter where you are in the globe, they'll support it. So that's what we advise all our customers. Obviously, everything we get is direct. So we encourage our customers, any issues, come to Rocket Drop, we'll of course help you. But you could also go to Apple first. And a lot of times we never hear of the issues because that's what our customers do. They go to Apple first. Being official distributors for Apple, how do you guys as in Rocket Drop market yourself? Well, it's kind of, yeah, it's a great question. It's kind of what I spoke about in the beginning. I think Apple really sells itself. For us, we just need to make sure we don't mess it up. Um, you know, we're not manufacturing the products. We're just distributing the products, right? And, and we so happen to distribute one of the 
best and most iconic brands in the world, which sells itself. So as long as we have um, the right cost, the right speed, do things right by our customers, our stakeholders, really there's no area for us to mess that up. And we do take that very seriously here and, and very proudful here to carry such a brand. So selling Apple is not the hard part. It's you, you got to make sure you don't mess it up. You, you need to make sure you get your customers what they want and the time they want and, and do it, do it in a way that it could be scalable and repeatable. And, and we've been in business for over a decade now. And I think our brand speaks for ourselves that if you order something from Rocket Drop, you're going to be pleased from start to finish. And we have a lot of pride in that. And so do our employees and so do our customers. So other brands have to come up with new models every couple of weeks or at least a month to keep up with their game. And then there's Apple who introduces maybe three or four new models every year and uh, still is ruling the game. So not only as a brand new device, but also as used and refurbished. So as for your experience, how do you think Apple pulled it off? Great point. I think innovation, um, they've been able to really integrate software and hardware and really capture that ecosystem. So if you have an iPad, you want a MacBook. If you have a MacBook, you want an iPhone, you want the AirPods. Not only do they control the hardware, but they're also controlling the software. And then there's this almost, you know, cult-like following with their customer base as they're cons consistently delivering good product to the end user that that end user wants to come back. They have no other reason to go elsewhere. And why do they want to come back? Because of the innovation. So that starts with the Steve Jobs era. I think he really set, you know, the fabric of Apple to innovate and continue. You know, I know reading the Steve Jobs book that he'd have a roadmap, you know, even you know, as he passed, right? He'd have a ro roadmap for Apple for years to come. In 2010, we'll make this product. In 2011, we'll make this product. And they've been able to not only, you know, innovate on paper but then deliver the said innovation and it's been a hit whether they did the ipod whether they do an ipad airpods iphone really they're market leaders in that sense so if anyone's going to catch up and, and it may happen um they they can do it but it's going to take some innovation such as apple really had to had to innovate in the beginning to get the market share as for your experience is there anything apple can do differently to conquer some other markets as well i'm not sure apple needs advice from me but um <laughs> I, I think they just need to continue innovating i think back to that previous answer if they can continue to come out and i'm sure they have a roadmap for many years to come i, I know we there's rumors of them working on cars and uh, different products and probably something that we don't even know we need right it's almost like they need to create something that people don't know they need it until they have it. And then it's like, oh, we need this. So as long as Apple continues to innovate and, and deliver on their designs, I think they'll continue to be the market leader for years to come. And it, they're showing that they have many, many plans to innovate. So where do you see Apple and Rocket Drop in the next five years? Growing. Um, we've been in business for close to 15 years now. Along the way, Apple has been with us every step of the way. They're a great partner of our, ours, a great brand that we carry. Uh, we'll continue to grow. We'll continue to diversify our catalog, not only with Apple, but with different manufacturers. And as long as we can continue to not mess things up, deliver things as promised to customers in a way that Apple wants, I think we'll continue to grow with Apple in the next five years and beyond. Any suggestions for your peers in the industry? I don't think they need suggestions from me, but I think I think they would all probably agree with you know some of the some of the things I'm saying. The importance of doing your customer right, carrying brands correctly, doing your employees right. Those things are important, really, to in any business owner, any company. And I think all the successful ones really value those. And the ones that aren't valuing those, you don't really see them around anymore. So I think there's common traits that you could look at with different companies and see that there's three or four that continue to be common. And, and those three or four we've talked about, you know, just today. And, and those aren't just talk, right? We really do believe in those. We do live by them. It's, it's in the fabric of Rocket Drops culture. And I'm sure it's in the fabric of a lot of my peers culture. And, and I, I think they're very important 
for the success really of any company, but more than the success, it's more about the sustainability. You know, anybody can achieve success. The hard part is sustaining it. So, and then when you're trying to sustain success, those intangibles are really important. And we really do appreciate the GSM exchange partnership. Really, we've been with you guys since inception and we want to continue to you know, build on that partnership and, and that relationship and specifically with you and Dave, you know, I appreciate it. Thank you so much, Jay. Really like having uh, Rocket Drop with us. Uh, looking forward to our many years to come as partners. Mm -hmm.